but one of her former students may have received some private lessons. The teacher now under arrest after DNA tests proved an 18-year-old fathered her son when he was only 16. It isn't the first time we've heard about a case like this. What's going on in our schools these days? Joining us now in our studio, former federal prosecutor Douglas Burns, and in Seattle, trial attorney Ann Bremner, former prosecutor and a friend of convicted sex offender, former teacher Mary Kay Latorno. Latorno, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Doug, it, it seems like these cases are cropping up all the time. Is it happening more often, or is the media just covering it more? No, I mean, I think the problem's always been around. I mean, sadly, it's, it's like what you see in the clergy cases, which are cropping up more and more. I think the media is covering it a little bit more to some extent, but I also think it's a pretty prevalent problem, John. What's your take on it, Ann? Is it, is it happening more often in society? Have some, some of the old taboos broken down? I think it, there's only a handful of cases. I handled a civil case with Mary Kay Letourneau, which dealt with predictability of these types of cases. Seven years ago, in her case, there were virtually no cases like this, and now we have a handful. So. I think it's kind of an empty surprise that there are very few of these cases involving women. It's not like the priest cases. It's not like pedophile cases. We don't have women that are predatory with multiple victims. Well, it, it does seem like it's happening uh, more often. There's a report out from the Department of Education that found 6.7 percent, almost 7 percent, of uh, students in kindergarten through 12th grade reported they had been the victims of sexual misconduct of a physical nature by school employees. Seven percent, that's, that's a pretty right. scary number. But I think when you look at it, it's primarily male. You know, the, the thing is, these cases, Mary Kay Letourneau's case shocked the world. I mean, it made all the tabloid headlines. It still makes headlines all over the world because it's so unusual. It's a real anomaly. And it spawned all these jokes, you know, it's the world Letourneau's, teacher's pet. There's something about Mary. She's every schoolboy's dream. So I think this is a relatively new phenomenon, and every one of these cases makes international news now, at yeah. least national news. Well, Douglas, certainly it's, it's, it's no comfort thinking that it might be male on female predation. I mean, you, you don't want to think that your kid, no matter which sex he or she is, is going to get hit on by a teacher. The male-female thing is a totally ingrained societal concept. I mean, the theory being, John, that if a male, um, you know, is subjected to sex, you know, they automatically, that's a positive, they want that. It's really ridiculous. I do totally disagree with Anne, however. I think that this is a problem that exists and is now coming more to the forefront, just like many other problems. It's not a question of whether it exists, it's whether people are hearing about it and whether it's being covered by the media. We're taking a look right now at the boy, he was back then, who, um, who, who fathered two of Mary Kay Letourneau's um, uh, children. You describe yourself uh, as, as a friend of hers, Anne, or at least we describe you that way. A lot of people wonder, does she have no regrets about giving up, you know, her first husband and her children and everything else to pursue this younger boy? I got to know Mary very well in a 10-week civil case that I had where Billy, the, this boy, and his mother sued my clients, the police, and the school district for failing to protect him from Mary. She has regrets, of course. She has four other children. But now, you know, she, this, the question was, was this a crime story or a love story? She thinks it's a love story. That's what she says. She served seven years in prison, so it was obviously a crime. And, but now she's going to marry Billy Falau, which is what we predicted in the civil case, that nothing would keep them apart. You know, these cases are very unusual, and I think they require a lot more study. I don't disagree. These are crimes. But the fact is we don't have an epidemic of female offenders like this. And I think we need to look at why these things occur. But the truth is, in the time, if Mary was a pedophile, she'd be with her next 12-year-old. But she's not. She's with Billy Falau, and he's now 21 years old. Yeah, taking a look at uh, the picture of the, the teacher who has just been arrested in California, Douglas, uh, should school districts, I mean, among, among all of the other things that they have to worry about, shrinking budgets and everything else, should they be you know, doing some psychological testing of prospective teachers for this kind of thing? No, I think that's, that's a good point. I think that what's going to happen is you're going to see more screening. I mean, we have that all throughout society, obviously, with background checks for employees and so on and so forth, criminal history checks. And I think it's hard for me, I'm not a psychiatrist, to say exactly what you would be checking for. But I think, John, as you suggest, if you delve a little bit deeper uh, into people's background, perhaps. But, you know, I think Anne's right that it's, you know, something unusual to try to turn up. Douglas Burns, former federal prosecutor, and Ann Bremner, a former prosecutor and a trial attorney out in uh, Seattle. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. A proposal